So what we're talking about today is a state that uh, so many people find themselves in, not Oregon, not Washington, but a state of overwhelm and a state of um, panic as it relates to your activities, your health, your fitness. And uh, one of the reasons is because right now this is, this is the news, this is reality, right? And I won't get into the statistics uh, or cite any, uh, any data because that's depressing and if you have access to the internet you probably know about the statistics and the data anyway. But there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the world. Uh, there is a dramatic change. We're going through a pandemic which has affected almost every aspect of our lives. And it is normal and it's okay in times where the information is the information is pressed into your brain from the media that uh, we don't, or that we, we have to create some emotional distance. And you see that with the rise and the number of people uh, checking out and watching Netflix, drinking too much, smoking too much, using um, any sort of escape behaviors to get away from reality, even for a moment. Now, again, I'm not here to tell you to live like a monk and not watch TV and not drink. Lord knows, you've got to live. You've got to live. But what, we're, what we are trying to avoid is the habit of anesthetization. So that anesthetizing ourselves, creating that, that numbness that is helpful at a time like this when you, there's so much to process that uh, we're avoiding that, avoiding that pain by uh, inundating ourselves with uh, entertainment and recreational drugs and, and things of that nature. So that now when you're in that state of overwhelm and, and numbness, then the, the actions that we have to take seem so far away. They seem far away because well, they're, they're large. We see the distance between where we are and where we want to be. And that's a huge gap. And um, when you're in that state of anxiety and, and uh, numbness, we can feel the pain if we start to, to, to be present. We're present with the pain, but the benefits are so far away, they don't seem real, right? Like, so if you haven't been exercising, you can measure the downside of like doing a push up, and that hurts. You know, like we're like you're feeling exhausted and tired, and that makes sense. Um, but the benefits that you get after all of the all, all of the hard work, they're far away. And whether we're talking about exercise or sleep or whatever, you uh, a, a quote that I like is um, when it comes to change, we can always measure what we lose, but we can't always measure what we have to gain. Now you're going to be out the time, the money, the energy, whatever. You're, you can measure what you're committing, but we can't measure the upside because it's so far away. So we got the pain, which is really close, the benefit, which is really far away. And how do we get to that place where we are doing these, taking these actions for ourselves? How do we, how do we make it easier to, uh, to commit to moving forward and reducing this sense of overwhelm? And uh, I, I like the, the this analogy of putting your oxygen mask on first. And uh, the, the reason why we have to explain that to people on planes is because when um, uh, planes first put oxygen masks in when they would lose cabin pressure parents would before they would help their or they would help their children before they would help themselves so they would they have fidgety kids and they're getting their oxygen mask on uh, while the plane is losing pressure and what would happen is the parents would become asphyxiated and then the kids wouldn't have anybody to supervise them and a lot of us in our lives we've got people all around us that we're trying to take care of whether it's our coworkers, our family or our, our children or parents or spouse we're trying to help everybody and be present for them and give and give and give and yet the, the person who uh, uh, who's doing all that work hasn't been cared for themselves we haven't taken the time to put our own oxygen mask on first and then we're not we're not any good to anybody and I say that because if you're on, if you're on this call you probably care about people in your community people other than yourself and part of the issue that you're having is that things are so overwhelming because you're already spent you're, you're overwhelmed with information. You're trying to be present and helpful to everyone around you. And uh, the, uh, the, it takes its toll over time. So by kind of slowing down, decreasing speed for a second, and realizing that to be effective and to, to be helpful, we have to be able to put our own oxygen masks on first. That's the, that's the first step. And like realizing that there's a triage, there's an order in which these things have to happen. And... So you have permission 
you have permission to take care of yourself. You have permission to uh, do the things that you need first. Maybe that's turning off the phone. Maybe that's turning off the news. Maybe that's going to bed earlier. Maybe that's um, drinking water. Maybe that's saying no to the happy hour that your friends want to see you at via Zoom because they miss you. Maybe you just need uh, some you time where you're not having to show up and stare and try to make eye contact through the camera with everybody uh, as I try to do that for our live stream right now. But so that's, you have permission to put your oxygen mask on first. That being said, what do you do? Because even if you know, you're like, all right, I need, to, I need to take care of myself. How do I, um, how do, I do that? Well, you, you already have the answers, right? If I asked you what were the most nutritious foods to eat, you could tell me. If I asked you how much sleep you should be getting, everybody's like, ah, seven or eight. Everybody knows that pretty well. I should be exercising, you know, mindfully uh, every other day or every day, depending on how hard the exercise is. Now, people seem pretty clear I should be drinking water. It is the, it's the uh, taking that first step that seems intimidating. So what I'm here to do is to give you a little bit more bandwidth and give you access to things that maybe you haven't thought of changing perspective so that you can take these actions and, um, and, and, and do them in, in bite-sized increments that maybe not, don't feel so overwhelming. So the, the first thing I want to say is you don't have to do everything, right? You don't have to meditate for an hour a day. You don't have to work out every single day of the week. You don't have to get, you know, perfect eight hours of sleep, especially if you're getting five or six right now. That's a big jump. So the first thing is if you're, if you're an achiever, you're somebody who cares, you're somebody who is a doer, a lot of times we think in these very large in increments. And one of my friends, uh, the, the great Emily Corso, uh, she wrote an article called Two and a Half Pound Plates a few years ago, which is when she realized that when she was working out, uh, the increments could be smaller than 45 pounds. Like she thought in 45 pound increments, which made it impossible to go up and impossible to adjust for whether or not she was having a hard day or uh, the exercises that she was doing. So with that in mind, when we think about the action steps to take, let's break them down into pieces. So like, it's a benefit. If you're not working out, starting with five minutes a day is a huge increase. 10 minutes a day is a huge increase. So think about these smaller chunks, maybe like a 15, like a, like a, a nice divisible by four on your calendar. You can put it on your Google calendar and save it. You can make these, these chunks of time that you're investing smaller. And when you do that, then the level of anxiety about the task goes down and the confidence that you have to, to, to take on that task goes up. So giving yourself smaller doses of the behavior that you want. So breaking it down into tasks or into smaller chunks, that makes it more doable. So for, I just admit, for exercise, you can, you can have a five minute stretch, you can have a 15 minute walk, you can have a, you know, you can, you can customize it. There's so many apps now, you know, we've got them at Training for Warriors, you've got, you know, you need a 10 minute workout, you can do that. But the, the thing is, you, you just have to give yourself permission to start and then make a little bit of time, but make it tiny. Make it smaller than you even think is necessary. And that applies to meditation, that applies to uh, anything that's gonna consume time and energy from you, is giving yourself that, uh, that, that permission to do a smaller increment. Now, that's one way to de you know, decrease the stress in the sense of overwhelm what you have to do by chopping up those tasks into smaller pieces. Um, the other thing is, you gotta examine your lists of musts. So, hey Danielle, thanks for tuning in. Hey cousin, good to see you. Uh, examine your list of musts. So a lot of us have a long list of professional, personal, family, of things that we have to do. You know, if you have kids, you gotta take care of them, you gotta cook them dinner, you gotta tuck them, in, tuck them into bed. You know, if you've got a partner, you gotta give them some quality time. Whatever, whatever your list of musts, you have to understand those. You gotta write them out. Because oftentimes we have all of these commitments that we don't necessarily, that we're not on the clock for, but they're still taking up our bandwidth. Once you do that exercise of writing out all of your musts over the, over the course of your, you know, the, the roles of your life, meaning your, your role as a partner, your role as an employee, your role as uh, a, 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 a healthy person in terms of your commitments to yourself. Write all out your, all your musts and the things that you have to do, and then make sure that those are all things that you think are extremely valuable and are the most important things. And what you might find is there's some things, I know I did, there's some things on my list that weren't as important as the, the things that I wasn't doing. So I was able to line items and things off and give myself some more mental and emotional and physical bandwidth. 
So we're buying back energy from ourselves because we're mentally becoming aware of the commitments that we have and we're letting them go. So you're gonna free up energy just by doing it. It sounds silly. Take five minutes, do it. You'll be so happy you did. Or what you also might find is the second half is maybe you've got a long list of, of things that are important. Maybe you got a long, hey, Ken, good to see you, man. Uh, you have a long list of things that are important and none of them can go. They're all really critical. In fact, you have a lot of important things to do. That's okay too. But what you can do is, because there's so many you know, areas in your life where that, that are important to you and you're accountable to so many people, you ask for help. So maybe there's coworkers where you can hand this off to and say, hey, you know, like I've got to do all these things. Can you lead this meeting? Can you take the minutes on this one? Can you be the follow-up person for this? Can, can I delegate this to you? I mean, are you okay with that? And, and, and getting recruiting. You could do that with members of your family. Maybe your partner hasn't been cooking and maybe it's time they did they cooked a few meals a week. Maybe you've got some, um, some roles and things that the kids can help they, in your home. There's all these people in your life that care about you, that you can ask for help. And now is the time to ask for help because everybody understands we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same space. So, but once you, once you have that clear, all those things that are important to you and that what you're committed to, then you can cross off the ones that aren't the most important thing. And then the ones that are, you could ask for help on to then buy back some more of that bandwidth for yourself and give yourself some more energy to then tackle the things that are important to you. So you've decreased the size of your list, hopefully. Ask for help so you got support on the things that are still on your list. Breaking, broken down some of the tasks and some of the things that you haven't been doing for yourself that you need to in the smaller pieces so you can get started and gain momentum. And when you start to integrate some of those things, whether it's the sleep or the exercise, or the water, or however it is, you start to integrate those things into your world, you get more energy. Like you get, you feel better. You're moving forward. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're building muscle and burning fat or you're, you're feeling more rested and more present. And then it becomes easier to tackle those challenges that are on your list that are musts. And when you get in the habit of that, reassessing and reevaluating what you're doing and making sure that you're constantly um, prioritizing your energy and your self-care, you get more energy, you get more of yourself to give, you do better work, you, you lead better in your own life, and uh, it's a positive, fulfilling cycle, right? It's also a negative, fulfilling cycle if you're not doing it. You get less sleep, you're less present, you're less happy, you're, 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 you're doing a, a, it's harder to parent, it's harder to show up, it's harder to do that, and it gets, you know, it becomes the cannibal game. You know, after a while, not people, not you eat people, but you start to consume yourself. So the, the distance between where you're at and what actually not where you're at, but what you're doing and what you know how to do that gap, that's your quality of life. All of us, including me, especially me have things that we know to do that we're not doing. And sometimes it's as simple as go to bed 15 minutes earlier. Sometimes it's as big as you know, realizing that maybe you need to put down the bottle for a while because it hasn't been serving you. So it could be big or small, but there's always a gap in quality of life. And, and you never, I don't think anybody ever does all of the things, you know. Uh, if you do, awesome, kudos to you. Please write a book, share it with the rest of us. I want to I read it, I will read it. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, it's taking that incremental, incremental 1% forward as frequently and as consistently as you can is what allows you to um, have that sense of progress and that sense of progress typically makes us more optimistic from the inside out, um, more, more happy because we feel like we're serving ourselves and everybody around us well, because we are. And that's, that becomes reality. I was a lot faster than I anticipated. I had a notes that I just flew through them, uh, but I got some people on. So did I not, did I, is there anything I need to cover that I didn't? Because I have time to answer questions and uh, I love talking. So let me, let me wave to some people on Instagram. Kian, I love you. Anna, oh my God, I haven't seen you in so long. Anna, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I, I think that the biggest piece, and I'll just continue to rant as uh, I get some messages here, the biggest piece for, for most of us is getting permission to start and letting it suck. Like, I don't personally love in living room workouts. I don't really, you know, I like, I mean, I have a beautiful gym that uh, I, I really enjoy being at, lifting heavy weights. But 
um, because of the nature of the struggle here on the West Coast with uh, our late reopening plan, we, we've just been doing a lot more body weight stuff than, than I ever wanted to do. But I'll tell you what, uh, it sucked for me for the first few weeks. And then I started to feel better. And I really appreciated the fact that I had these hard metabolic workouts that got some of the energy and tension out and were allowing me to feel a little bit more optimistic and um, a little bit happier in the morning and in the afternoons as, as time went on. And giving, it, giving yourself permission to have things suck. Maybe you make dinner, if you're new to cooking, you make dinner a few times at home and, it, and you're not, it's not that good, but you just take it as an opportunity to learn and you get just a little bit better every day that, that builds up. And ultimately, you're, you're developing your skill over time. So you become Chef Boyardee or the Bagel Man, depending on who you are. Okay. Um, anyone have any fitness specific questions? Uh, any nutrition specific questions? Life specific questions that they want to ask about stuff? Nope. Wonderful. Everyone's everyone's good. No one's overwhelmed now. Everyone's ready to uh, be an even keel for this rest of this pandemic. Woo! My job here is done. You can just talk to me. Because it's all about me. <laughs> totally. Uh, and that, Lara, love you guys. You too. Um, I kind of have a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. I love your office. Uh, thanks. Um, so when I find myself winding down from work around five or six in the evening, my pattern right now is to, on days where I don't work out, is to drink some wine or have a beer and then just do the easy thing and s tell myself that I'm tired and I get to watch Netflix now. So what are some ways where when you have a pattern that you can work to switch up that pattern and do things that you know you should be doing instead? A hundred percent. Well, um, I can relate to this one because uh, that happens to me about every first or second night, depending on the week, right? So um, the, what I would say is, Create a, uh, well, what do you, what do you, first of all, the first question is, what do you want to be happening? Like, um, do you want me to just riff like I know what it is or? Uh, um, I would like to feel like I still have the energy to do something creative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, you're an artist, so it could be a lot of things, right? Um, so one, when you get home, um, does it feel, so the, the, I have lots of things. First, begin a transition. So for me, like when I'm not conscious, here, here's what happens. And I, and I wonder if someone in your life is the same way as I am because I feel like we're kind of like this matter. But I'll, I'll come home and then I will all of a sudden be drinking a beer on the couch and I'll look back at the path of me coming in my apartment and it's like keys over here, backpack on the floor, you know, it's just a, just a, it just a, a, a trail of debris as I like moved in and just was like, and then exhaled and then like hit the ground. But somehow I managed to grab a beer on my way in. So I, I hit the fridge, obviously. And that's like the, that's the unconscious transition of Josh flying into his, his life from his work life to his home life. Now here's a conscious transition. I come in, put the keys where they go, put the backpack in the closet, hang up the coat, and then I turn on some music, and then I start to arrange things that I need for dinner, and then sometimes dinner's already made, that's easy, I pop it in the microwave, right? Get my water out, I get ready for my meal, and uh, I'm kind of, oh, I forgot, I put my shoes away, tidy up, and there is a musical sort of interlude before I go into my home stuff, where I eat, and then I pull out my journal, and then I'm reading, and then I'm, and then I'm, people are texting me, maybe I turn off the phone or just mute it, and so I'll get to them. When I get to them, I'm just gonna do some journaling right now. 
And so it's like the music creates a rhythm and the music is like a signal that I have entered a different phase now of my day and I have a transition. And the, the, the key is, is you want to begin the transition when you walk in the door. So it's like, you pop on the tunes, you know, if it were a movie, if it were like a movie from the eighties, Huey Lewis and the news would come on, you would dance with your partner because it's act one and you haven't, you know, one of you hasn't been murdered yet. And you know, everything is going well. So creating that transition point for your, for your day in life, uh, that is key to, um, and to, to making this something that, uh, uh, is sustainable, fun, and gets you kind of segued into the thing that you want. Um, I think that it's really easy to just like, oh, I'll just, you know, like say, oh, I'm just going to have like a snack or I'm just going to do something different. And um, it, that's actually not what happens at all. So uh, I think like you might, it, the, the simple thing is like make a checklist of like three things you want to have happen like when you get home. Like, hey, I need to get my, my clothes laid out for the next day. I need to get dinner in the oven or whatever. And just like, that's what you need the musical interlude for. And you're setting it all up because that's not why you're there. You're there to do something creative. You're there to engage with your partner and, and um, do things like that. And it's uh, uh, you're sort of like keeping your, your, your rhythm going without um, forcing you to use your willpower for the entire process. Yeah, I mean, I think as someone who likes to just go, 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 it's hard when your body is just saying, okay, I just need a moment to relax. But if you can find relaxing things to do that aren't drinking a beer or having some wine and watching Netflix and are actually the things that deep down you want to be doing and set yourself up for success doing that, it'll go better. You're really lucky because you you have um, one is space in your home to work. You have yeah. um, um, you've got all this stuff kind of pre set up, and now you just need to have a, a meaningful transition from one part of your life to the other, and you create that. And it should be a positive thing. Like a lot of people used to be the commute home. You know, they would drive and then they would sort of process all the stuff that happened that day. Um, my friend, who is a really good uh, software engineer, he writes himself a paragraph at the end of every day and like leaves it on in his notepad. He opens up notes, he writes a paragraph saying, today I did these three things, I worked on this problem, didn't solve it, uh, asked my buddy for help, we're gonna work on it tomorrow morning, and just sort of dumps the things that happened that day in a notebook. And that is like his transition from work because his work is just his computer. And now he's done work, he's done with working. And um, I think that, uh, uh, the idea of in your life drawing boundaries however you can and need to draw them is uh it is the first step so um you have my permission to draw some boundaries but here's the thing like test it out and then see see how it goes and like it could be for me i, I like to podcast so i come home and i start cleaning put the podcast on and then um and, and do it but for you you might find um different ritual but but do it and let me know how it goes awesome you're here for the q a portion celia and chris do you have any uh q's and a's cecilia you're muted by the way i don't know <laughs> Good to see you. I yeah. Um I'm definitely overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm studying, I'm working, and I'm living in a remodel. Here's the thing I know about you though, Cecilia. You're doing it though. Like you're, you're working out, you're remodeling, you're studying, you're, you're doing the stuff. So not really, I haven't been working out. I mean, I've been working in my yard doing okay. manual okay. labor. Three times a week. You're not doing three times a week anymore. No, I fell off the wagon. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing you're here. 
that's why I'm on the call. Great. So um, the, um, the strategies we talked about is um, number one, there's a lot like there's a lot of pressure and information coming in. And in order to get away from that, a lot of times we anesthetize, meaning we drink, we watch TV, we, we find uh, uh, we, we find ways to get away from the information and the pressure that we have. And so for us, it is um, slowing down and looking at those things that you can do to increase your bandwidth and your capacity so that you're you don't feel like you're being strangled by all the things that are coming at you, whether they're at work or your personal desires and obligations, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, do you feel like um, you have a lot on your plate in terms of all of the things that you must do? Yeah. Okay. Um, since you and I are just workshopping right now and you have a pencil, do you have a piece of paper? Good. Flip, give me a blank one though. That one looks pretty full. Okay. Thank you. Now, I want you to, to write down, write down the word professional. I want you to write down all of the things that you must do in your professional life. Work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just break it down to work and study. Cool. I do that five days a week. Okay. Is that, is it, is that a full brain dump? Those are all the professional things you've got going on right now? Career well, I mean, I, I work every day. And then I'm trying to study for my license. Awesome. Okay. So those are two big ones. Um, now let's talk about personal life. And then I want you to write down all of the things that you are committed to and obligated to in your personal life. Okay. Um. It's a long one. Good. That's the idea. Lara, are you doing this? You should be doing this. <laughs> I, oh, I just used the S word. I, I, I never use that word. I've like slashed it from my vocabulary. Sorry. You, you might want to consider. That's what I meant to say. Annette, you might want to consider. I just keep it all in my head to, you know, heighten my level of anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. So, um, so I started to make, I started to become a list person earlier this year and now I'm the most disorganized list person in the world. I've got like seven notebooks with just like, li like lists of things. And now it's terrifying because I've got all kinds of commitments of different people all over the place. So I'm really, I'm trying to, I'm trying to throw away notebooks now and, 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 and consolidate. All right. We're done with personal. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, you got your health and fitness obligations in there. You got family, you got neighbors, you got, uh, uh, what's the, what's that creature that you've been living with for? Andy, you got Andy in there? Andy's in here, yeah, dog's in here. Okay, all those obligate, okay. Um, you got your education already accounted for, very good. She's still writing, she's still writing, this is good. Mm -hmm. I put health and fitness in. Okay. It's at the very bottom, by the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> so health and fitness, that's just a category. So you got to write down drink water, exercise. You got to write down the specific things that Cecilia wants to do. Well, I'm not, I drink water. I've been getting better about watching what I eat. Like I had potatoes, some um, roasted potatoes and turkey today. 
Okay, this isn't food journal therapy. This is writing out obligations. Yeah. I'm writing down my obligations. Drinking water. Eat better. Eat better. Okay. Eat good. better. Drink less alcohol. You could just drop it off at my place. <laughs> Exercise. Okay. Okay. So you look at your list. Mm -hmm. Number one is everything on that list absolutely necessary. Just you just just look at go line by line. And and by the way, I'm not going to review your list. This is only for you. So there's no uh, sort of uh, judgment upon it. But you look at it and look at all your obligations and say, yes, these are these are all my values represented in real life. I am the most self-actualized person in the world. This is all important to me. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say they're all important to me. Are they necessary? Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, doing your laundry is necessary. <laughs> all right. So you're looking at your list. Mm -hmm. Everything on there needs to stay, right? Yes. Okay. Now, is there anything on your list that you could enlist someone to support you? in the execution room? I can try. <laughs> so just put some stars next to the ones where you could potentially delegate, recruit help on. Okay. Okay, so now through examining your list, you've got uh, some possibilities of getting back some bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So put that, put that into a, a separate section. Now we're gonna look at what you do wanna do for yourself. And you've got the things that, what, what is gonna make you, what is the one thing on your list that if you did every day would make you feel just amazing? Like this, this would give you energy and would more than replace the investment. If you could only find the time. Exercising. I'll buy it. I'll believe it. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna change your life, Cecilia. <laughs> you ready? You've already done that. Wow! High praise. Thank you, Pam. Uh, what we're gonna do is, can you exercise for five minutes a day? Yes. Yes, I can. Can you exercise for ten minutes a day? Yes. 15. Yes. 75. No. Okay, so somewhere between 15 and 75. <laughs> Here's what you're going to do. You're going to start with 15 minutes of exercise. No more. Okay, so you got to give yourself a chance to do it, okay? Okay. And um, I've got a couple of small videos that are broken down. I think, do you have a kettlebell? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you two videos. You, you set a timer. You don't, okay. you don't do them, you, you look at the clock, you said, I'm only gonna do 15 minutes and then I'm gonna get all of my life, okay? Okay. So, um, I'll send you the links and then you okay. will, you'll do 15 minutes and no more, but you're gonna do it every day because it's gonna make you feel so good. Okay. Okay, so what we did is, um, all we did is, we changed the, the uh, increment. A lot of times we think of increments that are large, right? Like, um, when we think about education, we got to go back to the university. Maybe we go part-time at night. Maybe we do continuing education on our own, like you're doing self-study, you know? Um, so you're, you're just going to, we're going to create an increment that is manageable enough to uh, regulate up and down without totally derailing your life. Okay. Okay. All right. You're going to feel so good. All right, I'll look for the links. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I feel like, oh God, what does he say in The Exorcist? This house is clear. <laughs> nice. This, uh, the, the, the energy in this room has completely changed. I feel like my work here is done. Oh, wow. 
Uh, Lara, do you feel like you got something valuable out of this? Yeah, I think so. I really well. I really want you to feel uh, happy and because I know you're so smart and crafty and creative, I really want you to get that creative time for yourself because you'll be so happy. Give yourself a transition, baby. Just a little transition. Yeah, a transition without a beer. That's a toughie. That's a toughie. I'm not drinking this month. And I, um, I went and, and um, had my car fixed by a mutual friend of ours. Ah. And uh, in order to, uh, like, just like, I picked up a six pack of beer, like out of like unconscious habit. And I was like, whoa, this is so strong. It's so strong. And I was laughing. Yeah. Uh, but he hasn't touched a beer in six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. He, uh, he figured out he was allergic. So he stopped, he stopped drinking beer. Huh? Stop drinking beer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get crazy. <laughs> yeah. That clarification is important. <laughs> um, well, I love you guys, and I'm glad we did this. So we're gonna do, a, um, and I've got a bunch of topics that you guys thought were important, and we're gonna hit them each week. And I've got some individual questions for you guys, which I'm gonna send out to you so that we can go deeper on this, because uncovering this stuff is how you're gonna to continue to move forward. Um, and I'm proud of everybody who uh, is, I'm proud of all of the Warriors, and every, this is the craziest fucking time ever. And we're just gonna, we're gonna come out of this more self-aware, stronger, and more resilient. And yes, it is my job to say that, but I also genuinely believe it, so. Thank you, Josh, much appreciated. Love you guys. Love you, Cecilia, good to see you. Annette, talk to you in a few minutes. Chris, I didn't see you again today. Congrats on the beard shave. You look like a different person. Keep it up. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.